welcome to Magathea Builder of Worlds. Um, this is going to be a video about making a building this evening. I have actually already started it. If you've seen my review of Iron Gate Scenery, um, the bakery and their pottery, you will have seen that I made a start on this model already. This is going to be a bakery for boroughs and badgers to go with my urban scenery that you might also have watched some videos of. If not, make sure you subscribe because you'll miss out and go back and watch those other ones. But then come back and watch this. So this is already underway, this model. I've already made the lower wall sections. All of my urban buildings have a lower wall section and then most of it is made of roof. So the lower wall sections and the chimney are made of high density polystyrene with the brickwork scribed in. Um, these the paving stones have already been put in place. These are uh, just uh, thin cardboard made from cereal packet cut out and stuck on and have been mod podged over so they're all down and they're all completely sealed. This has also got a built on backyard and I've actually used um, some dry stone walling that I've got from a, a railway model shop. It only came in straight sections um, and didn't quite fit so I've had to cut it down uh, and I've make myself the odd end piece as well to go on to. Um, it also features the baker's oven from the Iron Gate scenery set and a small piece of uh, piping that goes from the oven up into the chimney itself to feed out. So that's where I've got to. Um, I'm going to do that. I've, what I've got to do now is make the roof section, um, which I'm going to do with foam core, cardboard and balsa wood. If you come over here, I'll show you how we do that. Right, so this model is going to need a gable end on the back of the house and obviously a gable end on the front. And I'm also going to put another gable uh, in the middle of the model to support the roof as well. The roof has got to be detachable. I've got to be able to get inside the model like all my other uh, models for boroughs and badgers. Um, and I want it to follow the same shape, have the same roof profile as the other models too. So what I've done for this whole series of models is i've made myself a number of templates that are the right shape these are in um, hardboard and this is about six inches across the bottom and this is the standard template that i use to make the roof profiles for my gable ends on my buildings there are bigger ones for bigger buildings too but i know that that that's going to fit across one end here and across the other end and Going to make this chimney just about the same height as the roof but the chimney will have additional chimney pots added to it too so i'm going to cut that cut these out of my main material that i use and put this building up Here's a quick note on health and safety then before we go any further while we're cutting this stuff um, you'll notice that i'm using a fold up uh, knife that uses uh, changeable stanley knife blades uh, the common kind of craft blade that you can buy pretty much absolutely anywhere i use those i use slidey stanley knife i also they like to use scalpers as well for some difficult bits and pieces the important thing to remember is first of all try and always use a cutting mat um, secondly, cut away from yourself. And thirdly, make sure you're using a sharp blade. Um, most accidents happen and, and any experienced model maker will have uh, bled on many of his or her models. Um, and that's often because you're using blunt blades that you're having to actually work extra hard with to cut the material you're working with. When, this, when blades are brand new, they'll cut through foam core in one go, but two or three smooth cuts is better sometimes than one whole one and if you're using a blunt blade you'll tear the foam core slip and stick it in yourself as well so make sure you use sharp blades change them regularly and cutting polystyrene and foam board really blunts your blades very quickly even if they look sharp they probably aren't if you've been using them uh, on a previous model so make sure you change your blade before you start cutting
now I have my uh, two gable ends cut. One's going to stand this end. One's going to stand at the front. And I've also cut using the same roof profile. You want to, no, you want to stay there, go on. I've also cut using the same profile beams like this, which I'm going to be able to use to help support the roof behind the chimney thus. Um, and that will give you all the support I need for my roof. I am, of course, going to have to cut from the foam core um, the rest of the door and this window here and also the door at the back too. So I'm going to use just the uh, basic model that I've got so far to just give, make guidelines on the two bits of foam core so I know what I'm going to cut out and I'll cut out doors and windows. Now, scale is always an issue when you're making these models. There are a number of different models in the uh, Barrows and Badgers range of different sizes, and I tend to try and fit things mostly to a medium sized figure. This is a, a medium figure, a pug dog. He's pretty cool, I like him. Um, they're on uh, 30 millimeter round bases, and so my doorways are usually 25 to 30 millimeters. I tend to think that um, the big guys just squeeze in really hard, like the bits in uh, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, the movies where Gandalf has to squeeze himself into uh bag end of course some of the creatures in burrows and badges have building scale to their size too but i like everything to stay roughly the same um so i'm going to make the door on this the the polystyrene is uh, an inch tall already that's the him in there i'm probably going to go roughly speaking up to about 40 millimeters or so i think that's going to be about 15 uh it's a bit under 20, so about 40 millimetres tall for the door and about the same for the window, roughly speaking there. Right, so it turns out that I was nearer to 20 millimetres rather than 15, but that matters not. I've made four marks at 20 millimetres now and draw a straight line across that piece of foam core. And that's going to be the top of my door and my windows. Um, here's uh, with a just... Using my eye and the square size of the ruler, I'm going to draw in the doorway here. Leave that centre part. Windows. That I'm going to cut out now. And I'm going to do the same on the back door. So here are my three cut sections of foam core. Um, I have conveniently labelled one. I don't know if you can see that there front and one back just to make sure in a moment i don't confuse myself although it should be pretty easy to pick out because they'll only fit one way around uh, out of the back section i've cut myself a window that's uh, going to sit on top of the brick wall um that'll be smaller and easier uh to make and, and frame than the others but we're going to do that kind of now The next thing to do then is going to be to put the uh, half timber work onto these models. And for that, I'm going to use 2.5 millimeter thick balsa wood. You can get different thicknesses, of course. I've got quite a lot of 1.5 meter millimeter, but this gives enough of a profile to be able to work with and actually make it look pretty nice. So these are going to have um, uh, a timber go across uh, that acts as a lintel going across the doorway and the window and uh, we're going to have a central one going up here and we're going to have curved beams supporting the roof which is going to be a bit awkward around here but there'll be a small curve in here and then it's going to sit on the lintel so i think i've got away with it on this big shop window at the front so i'm going to sit and cut all that out i'll stick that on and we'll see how, where we are shortly Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the lintels to go on this gable end. So this is the piece of wood, the beam that will support the rest of the roof and is going to make the lintel over the door and the window to stop it being a wind door. Um, don't have to worry too much about accuracy here. I'm going for about 10 millimetres or so. Uh, just 
2.5 mil balsa. That's going to go across there. And what I'm going to do, stick that with my all-purpose adhesive onto that, then turn it over and trim the ends off. And I'm going to do that on this end and on the other end. Then I'm going to put uh, a upright right up the middle and down the middle here. And then I'm going to curve in beams too. We'll look at that bit in a moment. Now there is one issue with um, cutting beams and roofs like this. is a bit more wasteful on materials on the balsa wood than uh, straight beams are, but they look very pretty, so I'm, I'm not too worried. Because the other thing is the fact that I'm working with straight balsa wood and real builders, they would make beams and curved beams and things out of curved bits of wood. And we're not doing that. So I've placed my original roof template, template onto the balsa and I'm drawing on the outside line here of my roof now i don't want this to be a really thick beam so i'm going to kind of use that to give me a guide and draw the inside of it too um probably only about eight mils there we go now i'm going to cut that and that will be the beam for this side which i'll then fit and cut into shape So now I've got my two gable ends and they've got uh, all the wood on it, all the half timber. What I lastly do is if I left bits large or I check around, take a knife to it and just trim up so everything matches the profile. You see I left quite a lot of overhanging wood there. So I'm going to trim all that off in here around the bottom there just to make sure that all fits nicely and looks right. Right, so now we've got a front and a back gable end. So they're going to sit quite nicely on there. We can see the building starting to take shape. And I've got decisions to make now about how I want this roof to work. Uh, on some of my buildings, the entire roof lifts off in one go to allow access. In other buildings, um, panels of the roof lift off. Both types of roof have their advantages 
Um, the disadvantage to having a whole roof lifting off is it often uh, rattles around the chimney and damages the chimney on the centre. Um, and it also means that on the front here where I've got, I normally line the windows with a wood frame and the doors. Um, they've got to line up perfectly. They have a cut in the middle if I do this as a lift off roof completely. Um, so I think because I can, I've got more options with modelling, I'm going to stick, when I've made all the roof bits of this, I'm going to stick the whole thing down and then I'll just have roof panels that lift out on one side or the other to give me access to the model when we're gaming. And then all the wooden frames, the windows and the doors and the light can all be made from one solid piece of balsa wood, which is why I haven't done those bits yet. So the next job is going to be to put, decide where the two gables are going to go, work out where this third beam is going to stand, probably here in the middle of the building. Um, and then I will cut some foam core or balsa beams that will stretch between the different bits of the uh, roof gable um, sections, the gable end, hold the whole thing together, and then I can work out how I'm going to put the roof on. Uh, so that's the next bit. Now, because this model is, uh, the bottom of it is made from high density polystyrene, um, although I have already sealed it, I've coated the whole thing in Mod Podge PVA to seal it, to protect it from sprays and glues and the like. I'm concerned that if I use an all-purpose adhesive like this to stick the uh, um, gables to the polystyrene lower brick walls, I might end up dissolving some of the polystyrene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Gorilla Wood Glue for this job. This takes longer to go off, so I'm also going to use um dress making pins that i'm going to pin through the foam into the polystyrene that will hold the whole thing in place while the model dries and it will add to the overall stability of the model which is quite a handy thing to be able to do wood glue like this used per properly goes off and is extremely powerful stuff you glue both bits that you're gluing gluing and then you wait for it to almost go off before you stick it together and you get a fantastic bond. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. Okay, so this is the stage we've got to at this point. Now the gable ends are stuck on front with our medieval shop window. That's going to have a fold front down um, board there, uh, shutters and the like. And uh, back with our high up window and doorway and our middle set of beams and here are the foam core rafters that are going to help support the roof uh, i think i'm just going to have panel a panel that lifts off here and maybe just one on this side that allows access into the whole model um, so this is pretty good from this point of view. i'm quite happy with this now um, and the next job is i don't like having exposed foam core around the windows and doors so i'm going to spend a few minutes with some um, 1.5 millimeter balsa wood cutting some strips and putting in window frames and door frames uh, in all four of those uh, orifices so here's where we are before we think about doing the roof what i've now done is i've added strips of uh, 1.5 millimeter balsa wood to the inside of the doors and window frames front and back i'm not doing anything fancy with this back window like um adding a um fly swap lead lining to it because i imagine that the the baker here he can't afford glass like that his windows are just windy holes and he puts a shutter over it at night i've also added to the front uh the medieval front opening of a shop so the window is boarded up uh, at night with shutters that lift up to make a roof and a table. In fact, what I've decided I'm going to do is that nice iron gate scenery element of a baker's table with bakery stuff on it and, and a little cloth. I'm actually going to, because the legs are wonky anyway, I'm going to cut the legs off. Um, I'm going to have that just as a board resting on the main table there. That gives me my, my uh, baker's straight away, instant bakery. Um, so that's quite cool. So that's where I'm going to stop for the moment. Uh, I'm going to do another video about making roofs.
there we go then that's the the first part of this uh build done um and the first video of two to uh cover the construction of this bakery for boroughs and badgers i've still got a bit to do mind you um i've got to add all the roof and work out how that's going to take off which bits are going to stay on permanently or which bits we're going to take off I've got to add the chimney pot and there'll be a whole load of other details and bits and pieces to add outside and inside but i've got the main structure done now we can certainly see where the whole thing is going and i'm really quite pleased with that it's going to be a nice addition to my burrows and badgers urban table um got nice side delineated bits for alleys and, and streets which is quite cool another shop to add a bit more character uh, overall to my games it's going to be a nice little addition not a huge model but I reckon it's going to end up pretty good. Um, so yeah, next time, tune in, we'll do the roof. Thanks for watching Magrathea Builder of Worlds. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel, um, because uh, if you don't, you'll miss the roof being built. Um, find us on Facebook, uh, at Magrathea Models. Uh, there are albums for all of these builds that I've done. Apart from this one, I've just realised that I've taken hardly any photographs of. I'm going to take photographs of this bit here now, though, and catch up with that. And then we'll take photos of the roofs. But all my other builds are, are on Magrathea Builder of Worlds on Facebook. So join us there, subscribe here, come back next time, we'll finish this model. Thanks for watching. Things you don't normally see on these videos include what the uh, model maker is watching at the time. Oh, a bit of Sean Bean for you. There you go. Just thought I'd chuck that in. And the other thing you don't often see is the bloke before you, or the, the model maker before they stick things. Actually, have to sit and clear out the nozzle of the glue because it's all bunged up from last time. Oh, the romanticism and professionalism of it. Fortunately, I only do this, Robbie, so it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs>